Good evening, and welcome to the Greenway Annual Dinner. I'm John Hookstra, Executive Director of the Mount to Sound Greenway Trust, and I'm going to get us started tonight before welcoming other Greenway leaders to the screen. Thank you for joining us tonight as we celebrate 30 years of collaboration in the Mount to Sound Greenway. In normal times, I'd be welcoming you from the stage under the glimmering lights of the Sky Bridge at the Washington State Convention Center. You'd be sitting down for dinner with friends old and new after enjoying uh, happy greetings and energetic conversations during the social hour. Obviously though, these are not normal times. The pandemic, protests for racial justice, economic uh, stress and uncertainty, elections, We've been through each before, but never all at once, Once, which makes the challenges all the more challenging. And yet, even during this year of disruption, crisis, and uncertainty, some things have stayed true. Our shared appreciation for the Greenway landscape, our commitment to collaboration and partnership, our faith when we marshal our collective talent, energy, and resources, we can accomplish big, bold things. That's what we're here to celebrate tonight the spirit of the Greenway, the power of partnerships, and the accomplishments of collaboration. For those of you who are joining us for the first time tonight, welcome and thank you. I hope you'll get to meet in person next year, and I think you'll get a good sense of what the Greenway is all about by the end of the evening. The chat feature on the Zoom will be open throughout the event, so please let us know what's on your mind. Maybe you're enjoying a special dinner, sipping on a Greenway-themed drink, or just wanna give a shout out to a project partner, go for it. And if you're interested in supporting the Greenway, here's a link to our donation page, which you'll also see in the chat window this evening. As some added incentive, we have a special challenge match tonight. Any gift of $500 or more will be matched by Sally and Warren Jewell and Maggie Walker, effectively doubling your gift. And don't forget to keep your Greenway bingo card handy then listen for Greenway buzzwords. If you get a bingo, put it in the chat window and you'll have a chance to win a prize during the event. Since the very early years of the Greenway, the Greenway dinner has been the most special night of the year for our organization and for the greater coalition that's the foundation for everything we do. Something magical happens when we come together to reminisce, celebrate, shake hands, share successes and appreciate each other. It relights the flame of the Greenway. It renews the abiding partnerships that are our secret recipe, and it recharges us for another year of good work, of joyful work and collaboration in this amazing place that we care for together. Our shared goal tonight is to generate that Greenway magic, even though we're not together in the same way we usually are. Tonight is extra special because we celebrate 30 years since the Mountains to Sound March got all this started. Motivated by the idea that there should be a greenway stretching from the rugged Cascade Mountains to the shores of Puget Sound, 75 intrepid hikers set out from Snoqualmie Pass and journeyed all the way to the Seattle waterfront during the summer of 1990. Along the way, these grassroots activists enlisted the help of grass top leaders in government and business to start turning the idea of the greenway into reality. 30 years on, the coalition is still growing and still working to bring the vision of the Greenway to life. All of you joining us tonight are now part of that sustained effort, and I thank you for that. Later in the program, you'll hear from some of the original Greenway leaders and also from some of the next generation of leaders who will share their thoughts about the Greenway's next 30 years. We also have some great Greenway projects and people to celebrate tonight. But first, I want to call out a national achievement that's a really bright spot in this difficult year for our country. Passage of the bipartisan Great American Outdoors Act this summer was a huge win and a long time coming. This legislation brings desperately needed funding to care for public lands across the entire country, to address a growing maintenance backlog for our national parks, our national forests, and other federally managed lands and it included permanent authorization for the largest source of conservation funding in our nation's history, the Land and Water Conservation Fund. We're grateful to everyone who spoke up in support of public lands and to our congressional leaders for championing this legislation. Now, before we celebrate more achievements from this year, there are some people I'd like to thank. First, our sponsors, including our presenting sponsor, Greenvelope. 
In such a difficult and uncertain year for so many businesses, we are profoundly grateful for your support. You are true friends and champions of the Greenway. To our board members, many of whom are here with us virtually tonight, we are so lucky to have such dedicated, talented, relentless, caring, and generous people helping to lead the Greenway Trust. You support us and the mission of the Greenway in every possible way. Your expertise, your advice, and your service are so very appreciated. Thank you. The Greenway also benefits from the wisdom, experience, and know-how of our board of advisors, technical advisory council, and many action teams and working groups. Thank you for your active involvement. And to the Greenway staff, your dedication to the Greenway's mission, and more important, your embodiment of the Greenway's values are the motive force behind so much good that happens across the Greenway every day. I'm proud to be part of your team, and I'm especially grateful for your adaptability, your resilience, and your good spirit throughout this very challenging year. Finally, our work is only possible because this community loves the outdoors enough and cares enough to invest in the stewardship of the Mountains to Sound Greenway. Thank you to our Greenway visionaries for your generous support of our work and for helping ensure that we preserve the natural splendor that makes this such an incredible place to live. It's now my pleasure to introduce a virtualized version of one of the Greenway Dinner's most treasured traditions, the Parade of Accomplishments. While we can't welcome people onto the stage for their moment in the spotlight, we can still celebrate some of the many collaborative achievements across the Greenway this year. When Kurt Frey served as president of the Greenway Board of Directors, he said his worst nightmare was that we wouldn't have enough to celebrate at a Greenway dinner. Well, Kurt, we've never had that problem before and this year is no exception. In fact, there are many more achievements than we have time to feature tonight. For all of you who worked on a project in the Greenway this year, please know that your efforts and your contributions to making the Greenway a better place are all very much appreciated. The parade is gonna run a little differently than in years past. We're gonna take it in parts. Marie Quashis, Greenway board member and senior port counsel at the Port of Seattle will lead us through the first half of the parade. Haley Gelzer, Jim Ellis's granddaughter will then present this year's Jim Ellis Spirit Awards. I'll return to introduce the newest inductee to the Greenway Hall of Fame. And Josh Lipsky, Greenway board member and partner at Cascadia Law Group will lead us through the second half of the parade. So Marie, without any further ado, please, please lead us into the parade of accomplishments. Let's start this parade with the latest achievement for the, the Greenway's Middle Fork Snoqualmie campaign. The Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest has a new day use site on the beautiful Middle Fork at Historic Campground with a loop trail winding through towering evergreens to reach multiple riverside picnic areas. Most exciting of all, this site is one of very few places in the nation to offer an ADA accessible trail along a designated wild and scenic river. This former North Bend Timber Company camp and Forest Service Guard Station is now a place for people of all ages and abilities to experience nature along a magnificent riverfront. Thanks to the Forest Service, the Greenway Trust, and special thanks to funders of the Middle Fork campaign who made this possible, including REI Co-op, the Boeing Company, National Forest Foundation, and private donors. Add a Riverside picnic at Camp Brown to your Greenway bucket list. Tonight, we celebrate the finish of conservation on Tiger Mountain. Since the 1980s, when the Issaquah Alps Trail Club began to encourage public purchase of Tiger Mountain and surrounding peaks, many organizations have worked to conserve this 13,000 acre forest and ensure its ecological health. The Hailstone Homestead and Hill Properties represent the small but mighty conclusion to public land conservation. Thanks to these transactions completed by the Washington State Department of Natural Resources and the Trust for Public Land. 
This terrific conservation story kicks off a fundraising campaign in honor of Greenway founder Jim Ellis to enable future land transactions in the Greenway. The city of Bellevue constructed a new section of the Mountains to Sound Greenway Trail from the I-90 I-405 interchange east to 132nd Avenue Southeast. The new segment includes a bridge over busy Factoria Boulevard to separate bicyclists and walkers from automobiles, as well as a tunnel under existing freeway ramps and a 12 foot path heading eastward. This is a major milestone in a decade long effort to connect this regional trail corridor through densely populated Factoria and the Greenway Trail will eventually connect cyclists and pedestrians from the I-90 floating bridge all the way to Issaquah. Let's watch this historic trail connection coming to life. Once again this year, ECOS was able to meet challenges by creating something positive. Through their Sustainable Futures Festival in October, ECOS shared stories of community-based solutions to environmental injustices and promoted environmentally sustainable practices during what became a week of action. This virtual series included conversations on clean water, clean energy, waste management, environmental stewardship, cultural experiences, and environmental justice. The festival raised funds to keep ECO staff on the ground supporting communities and programs in South Seattle and beyond. The Trust for Public Land purchased 26 acres of lush forest along the Raging River between rural Preston and Fall City. This property will be owned by King County and will help bolster connectivity of publicly owned forests offering year-round recreation. Protection of precious riparian habitat along this important stream is a big win for recovering fish populations, including threatened Chinook, salmon, and steelhead. My name is Haley Gelzer, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the entire Ellis family to honor the recipients of the Jim Ellis Spirit Award. These extraordinary individuals embody the traits that Jim tried to live his life by, tenacity, collaboration, dedication, and passion. Their contributions to the Greenway are immeasurable, and they are a testament to the vast impact that one individual can truly have. Simply put, the Greenway wouldn't be what it is without you. Individuals such as yourselves are not only the lifeblood of this organization, but of our world. We need people like you who commit themselves wholeheartedly to a cause they believe in, and then relentlessly pursue ways in which they can move it forward. You have moved the Greenway forward, and for that, we are all extremely grateful. Jim's legacy and his love for this Greenway live on through individuals such as yourselves. And on behalf of the entire Ellis family, we congratulate you on this award and sincerely thank you for your vital contributions. And now it's my pleasure to present three recipients with the Jim Ellis Spirit Award. Our first award winner has tended to the health and well-being of Upper Kittitas County communities for 40 years. Dr. Paul Schmidt moved to Cleelum in 1977 as part of the National Health Services Corps responding to high physician turnover and lack of reliable health care. He and two other doctors established a family medical practice that worked around the clock for years, creating a stable foundation that would go on to attract other qualified professionals to the area. As the local healthcare network grew, Paul found himself with a little bit of breathing room, which he immediately reinvested in connecting people with the outdoors. In so many ways, he has looked out for the health of his patients and neighbors, and we are honored to acknowledge that lifetime of hard work. Paul Schmidt, in recognition of his steadfast commitment to solving issues of access in Kittitas County, from his 40 years of family medical practice in underserved upper county communities, to his 20 plus years organizing the Runner Stumbles Run, his work as a founding member of the Tianoi Community Forest Advisory Committee, and his personal investments of time, funds, and energy into making local trail access a reality. I lived in Roslyn for over 40 years now, 
uh, came from Detroit, Michigan, originally, um, by way of Seattle and then Ship Rock, New Mexico. Um, and uh, my wife and I chose Roslyn because it has access to this wonderful landscape, just to be able to walk out your door or ride out your garage on your, on a bike and come up here is really special. And um, not only is it the ridge itself, but the connection to the Tianway, which uh, is another exquisite and wonderful resource that we have locally here. It's been uh, great, you know, getting involved with the Tianway Community Forest was something else that I've done. and. Uh, now that um, I guess it's time for me to retire, um, it's uh, great to just be able to say a few words and to have a trail named after me. I mean, that is like a super, super special honor that uh, I, I just uh, think it's really wonderful that people have done that for me. Our second and third award winners jointly began a movement that has taken off across the country. During the early shutdowns of the pandemic, people flocked to the outdoors and our public lands and recreation facilities were suffering. Andrea Immler from the Washington Trails Association and Taldi Harrison from the REI Co-op thought we could collectively do something about that. They took the initiative to convene land management agencies, conservation groups, and recreation organizations during the pandemic to help spread the word about how to care for our public lands during the crisis. This movement became the Recreate Responsibly Coalition here in Washington State. It has spread to seven other states, plus two more coming, that now have statewide coalitions. More than a thousand agencies, nonprofits, businesses, and influential voices are helping to encourage responsible recreation. Their message has resulted in 432 million social media impressions with materials translated into Spanish, Chinese, and Arabic. I will also take this opportunity to note that this coalition is so impactful that the U.S. Library of Congress will include the RRC website and materials in, in a its coronavirus archive for, for posterity. Tonight, I am very pleased to present the Jim Ellis Spirit Award to the two founders of the Recreate Responsibly Coalition. I just wanna thank you all. It, um, it takes a village to use that cliche term. And I can't imagine having done this effort with, um, without all of you um, and all the work that everyone's put into recreate responsibly and making it what it is. Uh, similar to Frana, I had um, that joyful squeal when I first saw recreate responsibly out in the out in the world. And, um, and uh, it just no, none of this would have been possible without all of you. I will say that when Taldi and I were talking about pulling people together, we're like, okay, what do we do? <laughs> How do we get this going? And really, it was like just asking all of you to take part in it and helping us make it be what it is today. And I just Thank you so much for this past year. Taldi and I, to me, I've played a small part in bringing everybody together. It's all the work that we've done collectively to move it forward. So thank you so very much. I'm, I'm really honored. I am beyond honored and humbled to receive this recognition. From the time I met Jim, I was inspired by his genuine commitment to bring diverse interests together in a truly collaborative way that has had profound results that continue to impact our region today. The opportunity to convene both the local and national Recreate Responsibly coalitions has been a highlight of my career. Together, we can lead by example and continue to share the Recreate Responsibly guidelines to help ensure all Americans can enjoy the benefits of time spent outdoors during this public health crisis. Thank you. Thank you to all of our awardees for their wonderful work. Congratulations, Paul, Andrea, and Taldi on these well-deserved awards. And thank you, Haley, for helping share the spirit that your grandfather, Jim Ellis, instilled in the Greenway. The Greenway Hall of Fame Award recognizes individuals for lifetime contributions and achievements in bringing the Greenway vision to life through their leadership, partnership, and personal commitment. 
Tonight, we want to honor one of our region's conservation heroes, Charlie Raines. If you don't know Charlie, you certainly know his work, expanding federally designated wilderness in the Cascades, reassembling the checkerboard of public-private land ownership along the original transcontinental railroad corridors, and championing the innovative wildlife bridges that are now integrated into Interstate 90. Charlie, tonight we welcome you to the Greenway Hall of Fame. The inscription on your plaque reads, in honor and recognition of a lifetime of achievements in land conservation, ensuring the magnificent forest lands of the Central Cascades are preserved for future generations. For his leadership in pursuing the most important parcels for conservation and value to the public, in appreciation for his ability to act as mentor, teacher, and writer, for his capacity to wear more hats than humanly possible, including but not limited to the Mounds to Sound Greenway Trust, Forterra, the Sierra Club, the Cascade Checkerboard Project, the Washington Wildlife and Recreation Coalition, and the I-90 Wildlife Bridges Coalition, and in gratitude for his tireless devotion to protecting our natural environment. The Mounds to Sound Greenway Trust elects Charlie Raines to the Greenway Hall of Fame this ninth day of December, 2020. Charlie, thank you from all of us for your lifelong dedication to conservation and for making the world a better place by your good work. I hope you might be willing to share a few words with us. All right, thank you, John. Uh, I'm really honored by this um, uh, recognition. Uh, here it is right right here with my wife, Cindy. Um, it's, it's actually kind of strange looking back over 50 some years of, well, just kind of drawing maps, that's what I do. And um, trying to be the voice for wildlife and the ancient trees, uh, but mostly trying to ensure that we have a healthy ecosystem for the future. Um, now I'm not finished yet, um, but uh, while my name um, is there on the plaque, uh, whatever I may have accomplished has always been as part of a team. And one of the most rewarding aspects of this journey has been the friends that I've made working and playing together, especially in the Greenway. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Charlie. Well, it's been certainly been one of my great pleasures to get to, to know you and work with you. And um, again, thank you and congratulations. Um, welcome to the Hall of Fame. We all owe you a big debt. Um, uh, all right. I'd like to turn our attention again to the rest of the parade of accomplishments and would like to welcome Josh Lipsky to take us through the second half. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining us tonight. It is an honor to have the chance to present a few of this year's Greenway accomplishments, starting with Stossel Creek Climate Adapted Reforestation. The Mountains to Sound Greenway Trust, Seattle City Light, Seattle Public Utilities, and Northwest Natural Resource Group teamed up to launch an exciting climate adaptation project in Carnation. The partnership conserved 154 acres of forest along Stossel Creek and launched a restoration project that is, that is testing new methods to establish forests that are more resilient to climate change. Test plots are growing trees from more Southern regions where current climates are similar to projected climates in Western Washington in coming decades. This innovative project will help inform climate resilience in our region and is supported by Carter Subaru's On the Road to Carbon Neutral program. Very cool. Explorers of the Eastern Greenway have a new trail to enjoy this year, yes courtesy of Town to Tianway. Tamarack Trail Builders constructed 3.4 miles of what is affectionately dubbed Paul's Trail in honor of local conservation hero, Paul Schmidt. The trail spans the top of the ridge above Cle Elm. Local volunteers put finishing touches on this multi-use trail over the summer across private lands managed by the Nature Conservancy. When fully built, the Town to Tianway Trail System will connect the historic Coal Mines Trail and the communities of Cleelum, Roslyn, and Ronald through private and public lands into the Tianaway Community Forest. These trails are already amazing, so check them out. The Nature Conservancy transferred 1,000 acres of forest land to the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest. 
thanks to the Washington Cascades Yakima River Watershed Project using funding from the Land and Water Conservation Fund. The parcels are located just southeast of Stampede Pass, above the upper Yakima River, adjacent to a segment of the Palouse to Cascade State Park Trail and within two miles of the Pacific Crest Trail. The historic Salmon Lassac Picnic Shelter was built in the 1930s by Civilian Conservation Corps crews. After nearly 90 years of use, the US Forest Service was forced to close the structure due to deteriorating logs and safety concerns. The Greenway Trust and the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest have partnered with a historic restoration specialist, David Rogers, to return the picnic shelter to its former glory, working by hand and utilizing period appropriate building techniques. Greenway trail crews assisted the contractor with bucking and peeling logs for the structure, and five volunteers participated in a week long skills workshop to learn historic log construction techniques to erect a kiosk in the style of the picnic shelter. Sign me up for the next one. Thanks to the Washington State Department of Transportation, Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest and Conservation Northwest, we have a world-class transportation project that protects wildlife habitat and connectivity through the Central Cascades. Green Greenway crews are treating invasive weeds across Snoqualmie Pass and the new wild wildlife bridge over I-90 was planted this fall with 90,000 trees and shrubs. Thanks to this amazing partnership effort, deer, bobcats, bear, coyotes, and more are now crossing the interstate safely. So check out the wildlife cams. There's an epic elk coyote battle that is essential pandemic viewing. Hey everybody, I don't know if you can see me. I'm just trying to see. Okay, sounds good. Um, hello everyone, I'm Doug McClelland and I'm the, can you see me or just hear me guys? We can just hear you. Uh, somebody else says they can see both. Let's, uh, well, we'll play it by ear. Nothing like Doug without both. So anyway, hey, I'm Doug McClelland and I'm the president of the Mountain to Sound Greenway Trust. And uh, Josh, thanks you for everything. And thank you to all of our presenters. When my wife, Christy and I joined the Mountain to Sound Greenway March in 1990, the big problem we were worried about was urban sprawl and development. And that was the real effort when the Crops Trails Club led that march from Hayek to Seattle and um, things at that time was a lot simpler. Um, it was not near as difficult. Um, there was a big issue. We were only dealing with a couple of landowners, large forest landowners. And the real issue is how do we keep farms and forests um, uh, growing in our area? So we worked really, really hard in that first 30 years on the conservation of those forests and farmlands. Hey, there we are. Now I can see myself. Um, and I'm broadcasting here from my home in Preston. Uh, Christy and I actually met each other in the forest right behind us on Tiger Mountain. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that I'm deep in the Greenway and I wish I was with you and everyone on this, this video right now in person at the convention center. I'm just really glad to see you. Um, so, you know, that first 30 years, we worked hard on, on just trying to bring to people together, build the community, build the Greenway. Jim Ellis was our founder, Sally Jewell and Bill Chapman and other folks leaned in and helped in that, or, that at time. 
Um, it was simple, but we accomplished a lot. And we have a little video that we'd like you to take a look at just to see what occurred over that first 30 years. Why don't we take part of our life and do something that you and Bob would have wanted to do for him? And I said, you mean like take a quarter of our time and do projects that Bob would have wanted to do? She says, yes, like conservation. She used that word. And I said, you know, honey, that's a hell of a good idea. Okay, I think you can hear me again and we'll see what it takes to get the video going. Um, uh, up here on Tiger Mountain, the internet isn't very fast. I'm working off a hotspot. So um, it looks like we're working okay. Um, so that video brought back a lot of memories. Um, a lot has changed over the last 30 years, but our mission today remains the same. Keeping the precious balance between people and nature as we face new and ever-changing challenges across the Greenway. One of the most important things we need to do is to continue to ensure the Greenway's future is connected with new generations of leaders um, like we were 30 years ago and have the talent and the experience to, feast, to meet the challenges of the next 30 years. Um, so to, uh, to talk about the future of our work, I'm joined now by a longtime friend and Greenway colleague and three of those young leaders I just mentioned. So we have Sally Jewell, the former Secretary of the Interior and former President of the Mountain of Sound Greenway Trust. We've got Alan Caffley, multi Multicultural Outreach Manager at ECOS. We've got Nick, Nikki Pazzi, Upper Yakima Basin Coordinator of the Greenway Trust. And we've got Nya Cook, Mountains of Sound Greenway Clean Water Ambassador from 2019. I'd like to have each of these folks introduce themselves to you so you can get an idea of their connections to the Greenway past and future. All right, I'll start. I'm Sally Jewell um, with the Greenway from, uh, from day one, uh, early board member, and um, now a, a happy volunteer. Thanks, Doug. I'll go next. I'm Nikki Pazzi. I am an employee of the Mountains to Sound Greenway Trust. I am the Upper Yakima Basin Community Coordinator. Uh, I live and work in Kittitas County, and my role is to help link these communities with their natural resources uh, by determining what the communities want and helping them to meet those goals. I'll go next. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Doc, for this uh, wonderful uh, introduction. My name is Alan Kafley, Multicultural Outreach Manager at ECOS. Um, 
We used to go with Environmental Coalition of South Seattle before, but we have been sort of serving our Pizzard Sound region um, and helping diverse and multicultural uh, communities and businesses uh, uh, yeah, to practice the sustainable pra uh, practices. Hi, um, my name is Nyal Cook. I'm a Clean Water Ambassadors from 2019, and I'm currently the president of the Highline High School's Environmental Club. Awesome. So I'm going to just throw out some questions, but I really want you four to carry on the conversations. And let's start with you, Nikki. Mm -hmm. Nikki, you're a leader in numerous collaborative efforts in the Eastern Greenway right now. Thinking about that community east of Snoqualmie Pass, what is one of the biggest challenges or issues you are facing? Ooh, it's hard to pick one, uh, but I think one of the most pressing challenges is probably the rate of change and growth that we've seen in the regions around us and how that's putting pressure on Kittitas County. Uh, and so that's pressure on our natural resources, our recreational systems, and also our local infrastructure. Um, in many ways, the recreational patterns that we saw this year with so many people eager to get outside during COVID restrictions just really highlighted what those of us who live here already know, which is that Kittitas County is a beautiful and desirable place to come and play. Um, but the trails and systems that exist for those people to come and play on and the local manager's ability and capacity to maintain those trails and systems were never really designed uh, for the amount of users that we're seeing. So that includes not just our visitors, but also our growing local population. Um, Kittitas County is comparatively pretty small. We are about 48,000 residents. So that's what the size of the city of Issaquah, I think. Uh, and that small number of people generate the tax dollars that provide amenities used by every single recreating visitor. So when people come here to play, they use things like our county roads, our public restrooms, our emergency services, and all of those are only funded by this small cohort of local taxpayers. So Kittitas County is working to figure out how we meet the demand considering our small resource pool. We're juggling that, but also uh, the impacts to the trails and the natural areas themselves. We've got uh, just a skyrocketing number of feet on those trails and many of the trails were never designed for that. Um, some of them weren't designed at all. A lot of them are old wildlife tracks or they are footpaths used by indigenous people since time immemorial. Uh, some are logging roads or minecart trails. Um, so since they weren't designed, they tend to cut through areas that can cause erosion, uh, disturb wildlife, negatively impact the water systems that the communities rely on, and even um, increase the risk of wildfire, uh, especially with more and more feet on them. So that seems like a lot. And it uh, puts Kittitas County in this unique position where we have all these challenges caused by the sudden growth, but we also have an opportunity to shape what we want those systems to look like into the future. Seattle went through something really similar when the Greenway started out, which was a little bit before my time, uh, but I always got the impression that the growth in Seattle was happening so quickly that there wasn't really a chance to think about how to preserve the character of the communities uh, or the things that the communities felt really contributed to their quality of life. It, it sounds like when I listen to people like Charlie speaking that some things were lost then that cannot now be gotten back. Uh, and I think that Kittitas County has learned from that and we're kind of watching from your hard learned lessons uh, and we're picking and choosing what things will work for us and what we need to edit to better suit our community's needs. Um, so we've seen that already in Upper Kittitas County. We've gotten you know, the decline of timber and mining industries, but Upper Kittitas County communities have adjusted. They've course corrected and rebranded themselves uh, for sustainable ecotourism instead. And they have become some of our strongest partners in projects like Towns to Tianaway, the Checkerboard Partnership and the Tianaway Community Forest. So that's a bit of a ramble, uh, but our challenges change, which comes with all of this opportunity and the chance to do it right, um, largely by putting the decision-making power in the hands of the communities. And that's the role the Greenway plays here and that I try to play, which is um, herding those cats and coordinating those conversations. And sometimes, uh, helping to reconcile when opinions differ. And a big part of it is also making sure that visitors understand the pressure they're putting on the communities so that um, they have good manners when they come visit. So the communities are willing to work with us to maintain permanent access to natural resources. Awesome, Nikki. Hey, hey, Alan, um, the Greenway belongs to our community. That means everyone. Yet barriers still exist for many people to experience it in ways that others might take for granted. 
as you organize efforts to connect immigrant communities to nature, what sort of collaboration do you want and need from groups like the Greenway Trust? Thank you, Doug. Uh, this is a wonderful question. And uh, I think like I, I also want to challenge all the audience to bring that question in, the, in our thoughts and minds every time when you want to serve the underserved communities. Um, actually, uh, first of all, I want to start by acknowledging all the help and support ECOS uh, New Arable Program got from Greenway Trust and other to connect our refugee and immigrant community to the green and open space. However, uh, there is, as you, as, you, as you mentioned in the question, there is much more to do to connect everyone, especially those historically underserved communities to the nature. And I think uh, it will start uh, from, uh, from acknowledgement of, that, of our privilege and our power, and also accepting the fact that uh, there are many underserved communities whose voice and representation is needed to create an environmentally just society here in the state and around the globe. So uh, what can we do or what can be done? Uh, I think first thing is we have to go out to the community where they are and working to build the honest relationship with community member and their leaders. I say here precisely honest because uh, communities knew that they were cheated and betrayed in the past. And second, listening to their stories, their challenges and interest and asking them, how can we create or what does inclusiveness means to them? How can we create the inclusive environment for them to come and join the green, green and open space? And finally, how can we make them feel welcomed in this green way? Those are the questions I think we can, we can ask to the community and having all that information in hand from that questions, we will finally be able to build and design community partnership that could address the missing piece to provide visibility to those invisible communities in the green and open space. Awesome. Now, um, you know, I, I loved meeting you when you were a clean water ambassador. Your enthusiasm has just been contagious. And you started an environmental club following your summer work as that ambassador. What positive changes are you trying to make right now? And what do you see as key to getting young people more engaged in conservation? Thank you, Doug. Um, so despite the pandemic right now, um, we are still having club meetings and make sure that every student um, will have the space to share their thoughts and opinions um, if, when they care about um, and also meet others who are also caring about the environment. So it's very important for us to make sure that um, the students of Highline High School have that space. Um, so we still have club meetings um, through Zoom right now. Um, and other than that, I'm also currently doing a solar project. Um, so I am working on that project with um, a few other community organization. Um, and since our our school, Highland High School, we're all most of the students come from a pretty low income background. Um, so most of them, all students have no access to um, solar because it's pretty expensive. Um, so our vision for this project is to um, help the school switch from using natural gas to heat up the school to um, to a more sustainable way to to heat up the school, which is solar. Um, and we hope that we can give access or students access to a type of sustainable technology. Um, and, uh, and through this project, we really hope that we can inspire other students, future students to even take even bigger and do bigger project than this um, to improve our community. Um, and as a student leader of this project, we have been like actively trying to uh, collab with the school district. And so last Wednesday, um, we had a meeting with the school board and talked about our solar project proposal. And it was really great to hear that they are also interested and also appreciate um, the student leaders of this project. Um, and I also learned that they, they do support this project, but um, we have a limit 
budget. So that is something that they're um, really concerned about. Um, so as like a student leader of this project, I am in charge of researching for grants and fundings um, to help this project moving forward um, and hopefully see it reach the finish line. Um, and for the second question, I think the key to getting young people um, more engaged in conservation is through education, which is something that I think the um, Mountain to Sound Greenway Trust is already doing um, with all the educational programs that's provided. Um, and something that I've learned through the process of applying to college and writing lots of essays is to show and not tell. Um, so we, I think it would be very crucial to show the youths that um, how important um, conserving lands um, is so that more people, more students, more youths will get engaged um, in conserving the land. Thank you. Yang, yeah, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Could you tell us um, how the student group, especially your club, are going to remain engaged with that solar project? Are you guys maintaining the, the machinery itself? Yeah, so we hope when we, um, after we install it, we hope that the students can help maintain um, the solar and keep it clean or something like that. And also kind of applying what they've learned in classes like science classes in the real world and um, just use the solar as a tool to learn and also kind of keep it um, and maintain it for for it to make for it to work for a longer time yeah now i have a quick question uh so like as a youth uh, leader you are inspiring other a student in high school right um what are the challenges that you're facing and what do you want to ask for the audience for help the youth? Thank you. That's a great question. Um, for me, through this project, I think it's quite hard to get um, the school board's attention. Um, I have, I myself have like reached out to them personally. Um, the superintendent of the district through email and um, explaining why we want the solar to be installed on the Highline School um, roof <clears throat> sorry but um i didn't really get any reply back um so it was kind of devastating to to see um like my email i'm not sure if she's too busy to you know look at it but i think it was quite hard to get in touch with the adults and the higher ups um from the district uh so that's some that's a challenge that i faced through um this project um, and something that I would like to ask the audience and other, other adults um, in this Zoom meeting is to continue, continuing um, to support the, the youths who are taking actions and giving them more resources um, so that they can feel supported and encouraged to even make more meaningful action that will like not only improve uh, the community that they're living in, but also the state and also the whole world, possibly. Wow. No, you, you didn't uh, say this on the front end, but can you help all of us understand what a clean, clean water ambassador does for the Greenway? <laughs> um, yeah. So as a clean, clean water ambassador, I bring what I've learned uh, from the internship back to my community. Um, and that's what I did by kind of sharing what I've learned from the internship with my friends and kind of getting them on board with um, being the officers of the environmental club. Um, and it also helped me a lot with like public speaking. Um, and like, it was really hard for me in the beginning to kind of express myself um, in English, uh, but through the internship, I kind of improved um, and I learned a lot. Um, and it was talking with the school board was also very nerve cracking, um, but through the skill that I gained through the internship, um, 
the whole process became a little easier. Um, and I learned a lot about like the solutions to um, a lot of environmental issues. So I, the Clean Water Ambassadors internship kind of taught me that um, there are already solutions out there, but we just need someone like to, to, to um, take action and start um, start something and engage more people because it always start with one person um, before it becomes you know a bigger thing. So that's something that I've learned from um, the Clean Water Ambassadors internship. And that's something that I've been trying to do as a clean water ambassador. That's awesome. Thank you. Hey, Sally, um, you said the lessons that you learned in the Greenway were some of the best preparations you had for becoming Secretary of the Interior. What Greenway lesson would you point to that could be helpful to your fellow panelists and our audience as they look to address the challenges of today? And how does local action complement national or global efforts? You know, I didn't know I was going to get called to be Secretary of the Interior, but as I took on that big job that I knew nothing about, the one thing I was able to draw on from day one was learning at the knee of Jim Ellis about how you create coalitions of people and generate trust and respect. And Jim taught us, and Doug was a young pop working for the Department of Natural Resources. I was half Jim Ellis's age when I joined the Greenway. I was 34 and he was 68. So at age 64 now, I, I realized that um, I still better be working hard to emulate the person that Doug and I and so many of us uh, on that have been associated with the Greenway uh, got to learn as mentees of Jim Ellis. Um, and I know that at 34, I thought I was young. Um, I didn't look as young as either of Alan or Nikki and certainly Miha. So <laughs> you got a lot of runway in front of you. The key thing I learned was about the value of coalitions the value of listening, the importance of leveling a playing field. When you're sitting around the table, the person next to you might be a community activist from a local community. And across from you might be a titan of industry. And next to that person might be a, a nonprofit leader or a local elected official. And what you learn through that and, you know, I think about the work that Nikki's doing in the in the Kittitas County and Alan's doing in welcoming communities that have not seen this as a place for them and Niha in her environmental work and her, her um, clean water ambassador work is that you have a seat at the table and you feel respected for your points of view. So as Secretary of the Interior, that helps me protect 140 44 million acres and the critical habitat for bird species called the greater sage grouse and the Great Basin and, and the um, Great Plains. It helped me work with communities on where to put solar power development in the Mojave Desert without impacting critical desert tortoise habitat, for example, or impacting sacred sites of uh, Native Americans who have lived on those lands since time immemorial. Or avoided conflicts with people that didn't really want to be looking out their window from their beautiful house at a solar array. All of those things mean coming together. My goodness, the Greenway has done that. Uh, Charlie Raines, uh, who we just honored with the Hall of Fame Award. Charlie would come to Greenway board meetings and he, you know, he had a, a very clear point of view at that, that point with the Sierra Club. And, uh, you know, he might well be sitting across the table from, um, you know, from one of the, the heads of Weyerhaeuser or Boeing. And what happened over time is we had respect for each other. We now have wildlife corridors in part because of Charlie's advocacy and his work with the Department of Transportation. We now have uh, less checkerboard and, and more contiguous landscape. Uh, and that is about respect and trust and listening and finding the intersection of interest and saying, let's not worry about where we have points of difference. Let's 
think about where we have points of commonality. And boy, do we need that right now in the United States of America. We need people to listen. We need to understand why some people feel left behind and why some people feel not respected. And the lessons are right here on this call with this incredible organization, the Mountains to Sound Greenway, that teaches us how to listen and respect each other. So there is no better training ground for me than the Mountains to Sound Greenway Trust. Besides the fact it introduced me to REI, and that's uh, how I ended up working in that industry too. So it's kind of a fun side story. Exactly, exactly. You know, um, listening to you three folks and Sally and I, the older ones in the room here, I just <laughs> gives us hope. It gives us really big hope. And, and that's the, the, the best part of, of this whole conversation. The best part of the Greenway is when we come together and I can't wait until next year when we are face to face and we are able to hug and we're able to laugh and we can be together. Um, and that hope is there. And the Greenway is, uh, is what gives us the ability to go through what we're going through right now. So I'd like to just thank the panelists tonight. Um, hey, Doc, uh, uh, do you have a few minutes for me to talk? Right, jump in, take it. Oh, thank you. Huh? I, have, I have a question from uh, John on the chat box saying uh, he wanted me to explain like, how can we make the, the community, refugee and immigrant community welcoming and inclusive? Uh, just want to give uh, a precise example like, uh, I, I feel like recreation is kind of like a privilege uh, for many of us, but uh, the community of color, people are living in low income, they are working two or three jobs in a daytime, right? And probably working in the weekend and going out for recreation is not a really a uh, priority for them. That is, that is probably low priority than uh, feeding their ch children or uh, just affording their living, right? So how can, we, how can we support this community to go out? Like, do we need to do, you know, give a stipend or, or create some stipend pro program or project, right? And then also like, um, remember there, there are a lot of like a restriction. Like uh, if you go to state park, there's a different kind of pass required. If you go to national park, there's a different kind of pass required and national forest different kind of policies and regulation. So this community are really behind. And yeah, I think inclusiveness come when we see this kind of challenge uh, in a broader lens. Thank you. Ellen, because people probably don't know this, that every kid in a park pass that every fourth grader in the United States now has that's codified by Congress when this administration tried to kill it, will actually, if you put it on your dashboard, work as a national forest pass, just so you know. <laughs> so if you got a fourth grader in your family, um, that pass is taken care of, just thought I'd add that. Thank you. Alan, if the Greenway as an organization were to do one thing tomorrow to improve access to the outdoors for communities of color, what, what would that be? Oh, the, the, yeah, I think like pretty much circling back to the same question before, right? Um, uh, really understanding the community. Uh, I think going out, right, and asking like, hey, what is your challenge? Why are you not uh, visible in this outdoor space, right? If we ask this question, the community will tell all the answers. Yeah. All right. Now has a question, right? I have something to add also to Nikki's question. I think it's important to get their attention and let them know that that they can be outdoor because a lot for my school, a lot of people don't really know um, about um, the Mountain to Sound Greenway and they don't really know what they can do to go outside, um, to go on hikes. So I think it's important to let them know that there are these resources um, that they can get to so they can um, go hiking or be in the nature and experience all that peaceful feelings. Yeah. In a way that they feel safe and like they, they're not going to screw it up and end up harming themselves on accident. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. All right, you guys. Um, I think we could go forever. I want to let you know that um, Sally and I know that we can continue to work another uh, eight or 10 years because Jim did too. <laughs> so we'll still be there, but we also know that there are young folks that are gonna take it and run with it and take it in a place that we could have never imagined. And if we just retain those basic principles of collaboration, and working together and eating together, uh, coming together at the community center, 
um, uh, getting to know people across the table and the values that the Greenway has, then we know that we're going to be able to make it. Um, you know, even in difficult times, because we've got amazing partners, volunteers, crew members, and supporters, we know that we um, can make it and move forward. And, you know, when you get involved in the Greenway, um, you can give your time, you can give your hard work, um, you can volunteer, and you can also donate. And I'd just like to challenge us again to recognize that uh, this is a tough time and this would be a great opportunity to donate to the Mountains of Sound Greenway and that uh, Sally and Warren Jewell and Maggie Walker uh, offered to match $500 donations, but any amount is fine. So uh, if you go to mtsgreenway.org slash dinner dash donation, or just call Mike Woodson tomorrow morning and say, hey, Mike, <laughs> I wanna help. Uh, that would be great. Um, uh, or just put it in the mail or whatever else, do what you can. Um, but that's a big part of helping this move along. And I'd like everybody to uh, reach out and get a glass something that you can raise in a toast. And I'm gonna ask the people that are with me to stand behind uh, with a toast. Uh, Christy and Lily and Pat and um, Beth are here with us. And I'd like us to all raise a toast together um, uh, for the power of partnership and working together. And as Jim Ellis would say, good show. <laughs> good, good show. show. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. See you on the trail. <laughs>